All right, everyone, so uh, I just want to walk you through the answer. Those of you that want to see the answer, see how you did. If you got confused, then go ahead and uh, it's definitely best probably to do a video and go ahead and show you how to do this step by step. Um, online class is obviously a little bit difficult to communicate via email. So hopefully these videos help you out. So as you can see, um, as I'm talking, I'm filling out, I'm multi-talented, multi-skilled. I'm filling out my graph. So again, you should label your P and uh, Q. Um, uh, price on your y-axis and quantity on your x-axis draw your demand curves I know getting a little bit monotonous and boring but um, this is what you're paying to um, learn and again this is important for for businesses um, even if you're out of business it's really underst understand I've actually given some um, talks about um, real estate and things like that and even people in their field VPs and stuff don't fully understand supply and demand so hopefully you guys as future business leaders will understand this well All right so I almost have my um, supply and demand curves labeled and I'm almost ready to go again that should be the first thing that you do before you go ahead and tackle this so I'm looking at coke uh, coke soda and let's say I'm working for Coca-Cola. Actually, I do know some people that have gotten uh, really good jobs working for Coca-Cola. And let's say these different situations are happening at Coca-Cola, um, and they have to figure out how this is going to impact their their business. Okay. So the first one is the price of sugar increases. So if you're working at Coca-Cola, you should understand that soda obviously is a very um, important cost into soda. Soda is unfortunately a lot of sugar. Um, so that's an input cost, all right, and that's going to shift our supply curve to the left, which obviously would increase our prices or increase our costs, all right? So the first thing we want to do is label that input cost or input price. Um, no change in the demand curve, so demand is not changing here. Supply is going to shift to the left, so let's go ahead and label that accordingly. All right, let's shift to the left, please. There we go. And that's going to push the price up and the equilibrium will uh, move to the left there and push quantity down, right? And then you want to label price and quantity. Price of Pepsi decreases. So whenever you hear a price change, you should potentially think um, price of related good. How is Pepsi related to Coke? It's a substitute. So that will shift our demand curve. If, if Pepsi is decreasing their price, more people are going to buy Pepsi and less people are going to buy Coke. Um, Coke and Pepsi is a classic duopoly, something that you'll learn in microeconomics. So that will push your demand curve for Coke to the left. That's our competitors. That's going to push prices down and our quantity down. Number three, soda is, um, unfortunately, this is probably one of the main things impacting Coca-Cola. It has been known to be unhealthy, um, and it does is a big contributor to obesity and diabetes. Diabetes is a major problem. So as a company that is impacting Coca-Cola, that is definitely probably one of the main things shifting the demand curve to the left and pushing down prices and quantity. So number three, that's an important one. That is impacting Coke and obviously um, McDonald's and other companies, and that's impacting their brand. So again, let's you know, I know we're trying to get a grade here and get out of here, but um, at the end of the day, a lot of times this is the only time that you actually learn economics, and, and for whatever reason throughout your career, you'll have to refer back to some of the supply and demand things that you learned here. All right, number four, um, cheeseburger prices go down. I'm thinking like McDonald's. Well, cheeseburgers and Coke are complements so of the price of cheeseburgers go down people are going to buy more cheeseburgers they'll buy more soda so the demand curve would shift to the right and push up prices that's a good thing better fountain soda machine so that's technology that it allows me to supply more to the marketplace so that would shift our supply curve to the right again right is an increase that would actually push down prices but increase quantity number six six uh, coke reduces the price of their soda so that's a price change of the good itself. So you should be thinking movement, right? So again, the curves are not shifting. We're just moving along the demand curve. So we want to draw a downward arrow, no change in supply, and go ahead and draw that accordingly, all right? Number seven, taxes. So you see this, uh, this is another big one happening, especially in Philadelphia, where Philadelphia has that soda tax. Um, a lot of interesting things can happen there. And again, this is a classic economist that's coming up with an idea to try and deal with diabetes 
Um, so soda tax obviously would um, actually be a movement as well on the demand curve, and that money would be going into the revenue for the government. Now there could, um, a lot of people are actually moving outside the city to get the soda, and then there's a black market that can develop. Um, also another thing are substitutes. If you increase the, the price of soda, if people still want sugar, they could buy something else like Gatorade, or they could buy candy or other things. So um, again, that's an interesting thing that's developing as well today, especially down in Philadelphia. All right, the last one, wages are going up. You could argue um, normal good or inferior good. Um, it's probably a little bit of both, but if wages are going up, I would generally say that people may buy more soda. I don't know what they would trade up for soda. There's not a lot of uh, other items besides soda that would be better. So I would say if uh, the economy is doing well and income is going up, prices would go up and uh, the demand curve would shift to the, to the right there. All right? So good job. Hopefully you got everything right. And again, hopefully this video helps any of you that needed clarification. Um, again, with the online class, it's difficult to communicate this, but hopefully these videos help. Thank you very much. Have a great day.